Hey guys and welcome back to the Windows Phone 7 tutorials for Mango. Um, I'm going to show you, this is their seventh tutorial, and I'm going to show you how to download a web page, use its content, and display it in the app. Um, it's not going to be too complicated uh, on displaying the information because everyone's going to use it differently. Um, you can actually use PHP to post information and then get certain things from a database which you could use in your app. So it's just an easy, quick way of grabbing stuff from a database, and it's just really simple. So it's always handy. Um, okay, so first thing we're going to do is obviously make a new application. I've called mine downloading web page. Um, and then I'm just going to add a text block to the page. I'm going to leave the text block uh, default text in there just so that we know when the information has come down that it's changing. So we'll just enlarge this. Okay, so first things first is we've got to add the, um, the code to set the URL. So we start off like this. I'm just going to go for get page because it's a nice simple simple thing to to write really <laughs> stops things getting too complicated okay so here we're just starting a new web client and now we can use that to then do open sync okay so I'm going to be using this address for now, um, just because it's the address that I'm going to use to demonstrate the data. Um, and then we need to do another one to open the read complete. And once it's completed, um, we need to tell it what to do next. So the next thing to do, oh, And we need to tell it the next thing. So we're going to make another little function in a second. Um, and we're going to call it web client underscore. Uh, let's call it open. Let's call it open read complete. Just to make things easy. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have to make this little thing here we just wrote. So if we just copy that to make it easier. And what we need to do here is void. And then we need to type in our little line there and then we need to just do object is sender um, and then we need to do open read complete event I do believe and then an E so what we're going to do now um, oh it's not happy why isn't it happy That's not good. Hmm. I can't understand why that's come up like that. Oh, it's because I've used open write and not open read. There we go. Sorted. That was a simple mistake. It's a bit early in the morning, so <coughs> there's going to be lots of these. Um, I always put the try in try catch in here that we did from the last video, just because it allows you to work out if it's managed to get the information or not. And then I'll just put a simple message box in here that just says, please check your data connection. Because it's likely that your page is, is going to be up live. It's like the person's internet hasn't worked and they haven't been able to download what they wanted. So now inside here, we have to do using, and we do var reader equals new stream reader. Problem here is, stream reader doesn't exist yet we didn't put that in so we need to do e dot result okay so that was we want to do that so now we have to add stream reader <coughs> so we just use the little drop down bit here and click using it and there we go it's put it in for us so we didn't have to write the little the little line of system.io here but you could write that first if you wanted to um, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a string and I'm going to call it downloaded and this is going to be the information that was downloaded from the uh, reader. And then I'm just going to do reader dot um, read to end. So it's going to read all the information and put it into that string for us. Um, now we want to put it into our text block. So text block one text is equal to downloaded. And there we go. Hopefully, when we run this up, oh wait, we didn't put it in the initialize. So once the once the um, app is initializing, we need to tell it to run the get page that we made. So we need to go for the get page like that. And that's simply it. So now, when we run the app, we should see 
some information. Yep, there we go. So this was a page that I made um, on you know live. So when you look at it, when you go to the address, um, it gives you a little a little piece of information here. If I set this to a one, then it gives me a different piece of information. So in going to this address bar, I've just pulled the information and brought it down into my application <coughs> where I can now use it. So that was just a simple way of using these. Um, there is a problem with the <coughs> open um, when you're like when you um, download the same web address more than once, the application kind of has it stored. So if you then changed, if you say changed this zero to mean something else in the page when you went to zero, if this was then to mean something else, it wasn't the same um, jumble of letters, then the application wouldn't update to it because it's um, stored locally and that would have still been in there from the previous time you downloaded the web page. So I think there is something we can do. Um, but I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's, I think we have to use and, just so it doesn't confuse the PHP. And there's here, date, time, dot now. Yeah, there we go. And then what that will do is that will put the, obviously the date and the time from the moment that you then run the application. So each time it's going through, it's technically doing a different check a different download each time because you're adding this date time onto the end of your PHP so where it's already going this and it's adding the date um, it's got data in there it's saying the data needs to be zero and then in putting that and on date time now because that and and the date time now doesn't mean anything to the PHP page you wrote it won't affect the data coming in so if I just do an and here and then some jumbles I still get the same result because there was nothing in the page to tell this to do anything. So that just allows you to then make it so that people can keep downloading the same page in case your content's changing, say you're making a live feed. It's always helpful for things like that. So that was just a nice simple tutorial on how to use the download web page. Um, if you need any additional help with that, again, just, just get in contact. Let me know if you uh, need help with anything. Um, that's it, really. That's it for this tutorial. Um, the next tutorial, I can't remember what I was going to do. I think I was going to do dispatch timers, which is pretty cool. So, I mean, I use a lot of dispatch timers for the little games that I make. Um, so maybe, yeah, we'll do dispatch timers. So, yeah, okay, well, don't forget to subscribe, guys, and I'll speak to you next time.